has uh, terminated its agreement with a Chinese uh, steel major, HPIS Group, to divest a majority stake in the Southeast Asian business. Now, the key reason that they have stated is because of lack of approval. So let's run you through the piece of news. Then remember in January earlier this year, Tata Steel, they had got into a deal with this group, that's the HPIS, is a Chinese group, to go ahead and divest close to 70% stake that they have in the Southeast Asian business. Now, post this particular sale, they would, uh, they would hold only around 30% and the HPIS group would hold uh, nearly around 70%. Out. Now, the reason they're not going ahead now is because the group has not got, got uh, the approvals, the requisite approvals to go ahead. Tara Steel saying now they're going to go out there and they're going to be looking at an alternative solution and find an alternative buyer as well. You'll be wondering why is it negative for Tata Steel? One is that it delays the de deleveraging. Remember, they were going to be selling the 70% stake for around $330 million. And, and besides that, they would also be transferring nearly around $150 uh, million of debt as well. So it delays the deleveraging. Tata Steel, you know, now they'll have to support the Southeast Asian business. They'll have to support the European business as well. I remember a few months ago, everyone was factoring in that both these two businesses will not be part of the core Tata Steel listed business. And they'll be only looking at the India business. And it's delaying that focus in terms of the India business uh, as well. We'll have the management later today because of its numbers. So let's tell you about the numbers then. Now, in terms of Tata Steel's numbers, we're not expecting a very great set of numbers. Remember, in fact, you know, things haven't been looking that great uh, for uh, Tata Steel on the whole and the ferris sector on the whole. So let's run through the basic numbers. Top line, there'll be a bit of a degrowth. Operating profit will get compressed even more by close to around 13%. And margins will come down by nearly around 200, 250 basis points odd. The profit number, that's, uh, you know, the least important number that in fact is expected around 1,350 crore rupees oil. We already have a cheat sheet because we already have some volumes with us. But for Tata Steel, the most important part is a geographic breakup. India business first. We have the sales volumes that's coming at around 3.87 million tons. It looks like, in fact, there's a big growth out there. But that's not really the case because this quarter they've accounted for all of Bushan Steel's numbers in terms of sales volumes. But in the previous quarter, that's on a like to like basis, they accounted for Bushan Steel volumes only for around half of the quarter. So that explains why there's a growth. Stripped of that, otherwise, there's no real big growth out there. Now, Tara Steel, remember, in fact, you know, the demand has been quite weak out there. So what you're looking at for the domestic business is the EBITDA per ton. And that's likely to come in at around 13,000 to around 13,050 odd. Some estimates go as low as around 12,500, 12,700 rupees on a per ton basis. So there'll be a sharp compression on a year-on-year -year basis, as well as on a sequential basis, there'll be some pressure. Remember for Tata Steel, the pricing is lower, and that primarily explains why, in fact, they'll see compression in the beta per ton, because they're backward integrated. 30% of the coking coal requirement comes in from captive sources. All of the INO requirement comes in from uh, captive sources. Shifting focus to the European business, then, we have the volumes out there. There's a degrowth of around 8%, so no operating leverage out there. They had some unplanned shutdowns as well, so that explains why volumes are lower. And we know that the global markets are in a bit of a tizzy. So that's why, in fact, volumes did get hit. Uh, the EBITDA per ton as well is expected to compress to around $40 on a per ton basis. Some work with around $35 to around $45 uh, uh, on a per ton basis. That'll be a sharp compression. Remember, in fact, uh, weaker spreads, lower scale, they're likely to hit them. And weak uh, steel prices on the whole. The numbers are expected to be weak. I want to hear out the management commentary. Can they go ahead and do that $1 billion in terms of deleveraging? that they've been talking about. All right, Nigel. Thanks for running us through all of the estimates from Tata Steel. Like Nigel said, it's expected to be a weak set. We will also watch out for the management commentary. But shifting focus to another important story now, Reliance Industries and BP have extended their tie-up to the fuel retail sector as well. Now, the conglomerates inked a new joint venture to set up more fuel retail stations across the country. The JB will also include RIL's aviation fuel business. Now, Reliance will hold 51% stake in the new JV, while British Petroleum will hold 49% stake. Shireen Bhan spoke to Bob Dudley, the Group Chief Executive of British Petroleum, and he said that he expects the JV to get going in 2020. He also expects to set up 5,500 retail sites in the next five years. RIL currently has 1,400 outlets in the country. He also said that the joint venture is planning to have EV charging stations at all of these outlets. Well, I think we've decided to work with Reliance, our great partnership here in India. It's been a long, long time we've been working with Reliance. The teams work together really well. Mm. And coming together is Reliance and BP now in the fuel retailing. Today there's 1,400 sites by 2025. We're aiming for 5,500 sites. 
Um, and so I am very excited about it. And if the uh, if India is growing incredibly with mm -hmm. fuel. Fuel is it's the third largest uh, fuel markets today in the world. By 2025, it actually might be number one. So uh, it's really about partnership. Going off and doing it ourselves just mm -hmm. didn't feel right to me because we have such a good relationship with Reliance. In China, they're building huge new cities and they're putting electrification vehicles in from the very beginning. There's probably more electric vehicles being sold there than any other country in the world. India is, is different. It's got an existing fleet. It's got uh, used for all kinds of fuels. Uh, the highway system is being built yeah. out now. So this joint venture will take on all these new mobility things. So I just think it'll including, be... Including electric mobility? I'm sure it will, yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, uh, so... Where, where is the technology for the EV charging stations, etc., going to come in from uh, that you hope to deploy as part of these uh, retail outlets? Well, BP owns the largest electric vehicle charging network in the UK. Mm -hmm. uh, today it takes 20, 25 minutes to uh, charge a car, so we've been working on ultra-charging. Well, also standard disclaimer flashing for you on your screens. Reliance Industries owns Network 18, which owns and operates CNBC TV 18, the channel that you're currently watching. Time for a short break now. Up next, all eyes on RBI Governor as he will announce the MPC policy decision today. More